So Elon Musk and I keep having this argument. I say, really? this, <laughs> <laughs> I say the self-driving cars are AI. He says that they aren't. Okay, what do you know, Elon? And you really want us to believe you're chilling with Elon? Listen, Elon and I go back a long I way. I didn't know you go back. Just because he doesn't know that. <laughs> Really, what is AI? How can you define it? If you were to put uh, machine learning and AI into these two Venn diagrams, I think machine learning would fall inside the AI bubble, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't fill it. So I guess that's a nice way of saying AI is very broad and machine learning is this applicable, more directional application of AI. Right. So is that where you teach? Teaching a computer to be really good at chess. Or, or anything. teaching a computer to be really good at navigating on a road in a 3,000 pound steel box self-driving. Right. Things like that are applications of machine learning. They can learn the situation they're in over and over and over and get better at it, which is something you can do with AI as well as many other things. So now what happens when the machine is able to teach itself? Because that is what human beings do. That would still be machine learning. In fact, that's essentially what it does after a while. You feed an algorithm enough data over and over again that it's able to teach itself based on its previous self. Mm -hmm. That'll happen with a chess robot playing against a chess robot. That's how it gets better. Plus it can play an entire game of chess very fast. Right. Oh well, yeah, well, it's computer power right. is a little more right. instant. Game one, Yeah. game, game two, two. Put on, game three. On more abstract, uh, less direct topics like having a conversation. I don't know if you've ever tried Siri or Google Assistant or Bixby for that matter. Not that good. They learn every day. They get better at things like, hey, what's the weather in Akron, Ohio? And it'll tell you. And you'll say, what's the population there? It knows you're talking about Akron without you saying it again. And it answers that question kind of like a human would. Because of the proximity and time right. for having just right. mentioned Akron. Yes. Okay. So it identifies what was the noun in the previous question and applies it to the next one. So things like that are are getting better, uh, but still it's not as direct as See, Chuck has a problem a remembering task. the nouns that I have in a sentence. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I mean that. During the sentence. <laughs> While the sentence is actually happening, I am having difficulties. You need more RAM. <laughs> I need a little more RAM, buddy. Yeah, that's for sure. AI, which is a sort of a bigger, more broad fear, would be like, what if it goes beyond doing what it's programmed to do? What if it learns about itself, its own existence. Mm. I've heard you mention earlier, uh, I'll just unplug it if it ever gets out of hand, but what if it decides it, you know what, I don't want to be unplugged, and it starts to figure out ways, uh, and that's a weird physical analogy, but it starts to figure things out that it's not directly programmed to do. And whether or not those things get out of hand, or get scary, or get weird, is a totally open-ended question. You just, you just described Skynet. That's yes. what yeah, you just yeah. described is Skynet. It's right. a network of computers that become self-aware because of one central computer and then decides, oh, you know what? I think I want to run this whole thing. I need to protect myself from risk. Exactly. And separate myself from that human variable right. and just go rogue. I don't think we're going to build the robot that can do everything. Because what good is that? We have very specific needs that will create computers to do. Uh, we've been doing it and will continue to do so. I don't need the, co the machine that makes my coffee to be the one that drives my car. Hmm. I don't need that. That would be kind of cool though. <laughs> yeah, it would be a really weird machine to It would be a weird machine over. to think that up and right. to make that happen. And people keep thinking of robots as being humanoid and they walk and talk. Like in the Jetsons, the maid. Rosie. Ro <laughs> yeah, like Remember the, the maid's name? Yes. The That's creepy. Human. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to ask beyond that. Okay. That's just creepy. And she, she had a, a apron, a maid's apron. Mm. And so there was a day out of which I grew up where no one imagined a machine as a robot. A robot had to be humanoid. So the self-driving car would be a robot that got in a car and drove you somewhere. Not that the car was the robot, right? An automatic coffee maker was a robotic maid that made your coffee for you not the coffee maker that made. So, so I see distributed AI making our lives easier. But let me ask you something, because there's a whole other side of this equation. If it replaces 80% of the jobs in society, then how does anyone pay rent and for the groceries? Or is there, or is there gonna be sort of a government minimum income enabled by all the money earned by the robots that took your job? 
people's jobs will become making those robots, optimizing those robots. There will be a lot more scientists, a lot more people uh, coding and, and figuring out ways to make those robots better and more efficient as opposed to those physical manual things that the robots will say, end up doing. I would say the robots the fix their own damn self. I was going to say, the problem with that is we, are now, we now have robots that actually code. Yeah, So right. We have robots and we fixing have robots, robots. robots that fix robots. We have robots that manufacture. So going mm -hmm. back to Neil's point, at, at, at some point, I think you're going to have to have a universal basic income that you just give people right. for being so that robots, so that basically they can have time to do bigger and better things. Well, I have a philosophical question. Who fixes the robot that fixes the robot? That's what I was going to say. Is it robots all the way down? Is right. it robots or, Chuck? I'm, I'm telling you, you yes. started so is it all Chuck? tree down to one unit robot? And the I, one yeah. at the bottom has got to be human. Yep. And his name is Elon Musk. <laughs> just sitting around with a screwdriver. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> I like that. Waiting for that robot that can't fix itself. So despite everything we just said, robots could take your job, but machines have trouble when it comes to crucial open-ended endeavors like problem solving and communicating ideas, thank God, or more importantly, telling jokes. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you're comfortable with all those, you're going to be jokes. safe for now. <laughs> but if you're still unsure, then you can go get comfortable at Brilliant.org, which guides you in problem-solving, understanding concepts. And to get started, go to Brilliant.org slash StarTalk to get 20% off your premium subscription so that you can be an effective problem solver and secure our future. Okay? If you want to see more videos from Star Talk, hit the subscribe bar and click the little bell button to get notifications every single time that we upload a video and give us a like or a comment to express your passion. And we want to say thanks to MKBHD for being with us. And we're going to be on your channel as well. Exactly. Right? Cool. Yeah. So make sure you check him out. And as always, I bid you to keep looking up. <laughs>